welcome to another tutorial by Charlotte Reeves. In this tutorial we're going to be dealing with colour casts in specifically in black and white fur. Uh, I just did a shoot a couple of weeks ago that I've been in the process of editing um, with Blackie and Yo-Yo, these two dogs you see here. So both Border Collie, oh, one's a Border Collie, the other's a Border Collie Cross. And the shoot took place uh, very close to sunset, so during that golden hour. Um, and the problem that I came across while editing these images um, was that they tended to have a lot of different sort of color casts from the heavy backlight that I was using um, in the first. So I was getting kind of like a, almost a bleed of light. I'll open one of these images here. Bit of a bleed of light over from behind in this sort of area here where the color from um, the sunset was sort of affecting the colour of the fur in a way that was, I found, a little bit distracting. Um, so the way that I've dealt with colour casts in the past has been mainly to use a desaturation tool, though I kind of, I don't love the way that this works, um, mainly because it, you don't have a lot of control over it. So I've actually edited all these images, these are all done, but I've left one that I'm going to demonstrate a new technique that I've come up with. So I'll just open a shot here. So this is Blackie. Um, you'll notice in his fur, in the white areas, especially down here, we've got a real sort of pinky kind of colour cast to the white fur. And then if we zoom in and have a look at his face, in the borders between the black and the white fur, it's you'll sort of see a, a almost purplish, magenta-ish colour cast. Uh, on this side of his face, there's kind of like a, I guess more of a magenta colour cast and then on this side you've almost got blue down here so there's a real mix of colours that are coming through here. Now if I were to use, just use a desaturation tool um, and go over those areas, it's basically painting over those areas I mean as you can see it does work to a certain extent but I don't really like the lack of control I get over it. In some areas where you paint over, you lose the colour and the contrast that you actually do want in the image. So you kind of basically just get rid of a lot more information than you actually want. So especially just like I've done here, it ends up looking really just black and white and you've got absolutely no interest in that area anymore at all, this area here. So I'm just going to go back in these three. A way that I have, um, I guess, formulated, I haven't seen it done before, is to use a layer mask over the top of this image that is basic, basically an inverted version of this image, so a negative version of this image. And using that, um, it tends to sort of balance out the colour casts. Now, it only really works with white dogs or black dogs or a combination of the two, black and white dogs, uh, because if you're using it in uh, a dog that has, say, brown fur, you're going to get rid of all the nice brown colour in the fur. It only really works when you want to go sort of monochrome with the fur. So to get straight into this, I'm going to duplicate the background layer. So just by dragging the background layer into the new layer button to make a background copy. I'm then going to invert the layer. This basically turns the layer to negative. So you can either go to the menu, adjustments, invert, or you can just press Command I. I'm a big proponent of using <coughs> uh, big proponent of using keyboard shortcuts when you can because it really is a time saver. So Command I to invert the layer. So a little bit crazy, kind of what you'd see if uh, you were shooting film and you were looking at the negative. So to this layer, I want to sort of accentuate um, the colour casts in here. So I'm going to just use curves to add a little bit of contrast. So you can either go through the menu for curves or I just go Command M to bring up the curves adjustments. So I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast here. And I'm also going to saturate this a little bit more. So saturation... Uh, keyboard shortcut is Command U. I'm just going to add some saturation. Okay, now 
we only want to apply this to, um, <laughs> it does look a little bit crazy, it's alright, it gets better from here, um, um, we only want to apply the adjustment to a certain part of the image, which is the actual black and white fur of the dog, so we're going to create a layer mask, and we do that by clicking the layer mask here, and I want to initially hide everything, so I'm going to hold down alt and click add layer mask, and hey, you're all back to normal, that's good. So to allow some of uh, what we just saw to show through that layer mask, we're going to paint in the layer mask over Yeah, so I'm just going to do brush tool. So brush tool, you want to switch to that quickly, you just press B on your keyboard. Um, another shortcut that might be helpful, if you want to adjust the size of your brush without having to go up here and fiddling around with this, a uh, quick way to do it is to use the left and right square brackets keys on your keyboard. So the left square brackets makes the brush smaller and the right square brackets makes the brush larger. So we want to make sure we're using white here. And we're just going to I'll zoom in a little bit and just paint over the areas that we want to affect with this layer mask. I've gone straight over the eyes because uh, I'm going to go in and fix that up later. That's the advantage of using layer masks is that it's non-destructive so you can go in and fine-tune things later. So um, I'm not going to go over the tongue because we want to keep all that exactly the same as it is. There's no colour cast to get rid of and it's pink anyway so we don't want to send that neutral. It might look a bit strange. I'm going to go all the way over the hair here, so you can see I'm not being overly careful with it. So it doesn't matter too much. And fill in those areas, a bigger brush. And I think I've got everything that I want. Now I'm going to switch back to a black brush and fix up the eyes. You can quickly switch between your foreground and background colors just by pressing X. As you can see, press X and it swaps those over there for you. So I'm just going to paint the eyes back in because we don't want to affect the eyes here because we want to keep that lovely brown look. We don't want to make the eyes look black and white or neutral. Same way that we're going to do with the, with the fur. And I'm just going to go in and tidy up this down here. I was probably a little bit careless before. Okay, great. Now, magic time. Um, looking a little bit crazy right here right now. Um, but I'm going to use a blending mode. And the blending mode I'm going to use is Hue. And it basically reverses out and does some crazy blendy type thing. Um, and at 100% opacity, it doesn't look right. But what I want to do is just reduce the opacity down to about mm, maybe 20%. And as you can see in the problem areas that we're having, so down here and also along here, it's all gone very neutral looking. So we've, we've basically equalized out those color casts that we have. So I'll just zoom in and then I'll turn this layer on and off. So that's with it off and you can see a real sort of ready magenta -y tinge here and here. And then I'll turn it back on again and it's pretty much gone. In fact, I think I may have gone a little bit overboard, so I'm actually going to reduce your opacity a little bit because the idea isn't to make it completely black and white because that would look unnatural because there's always going to be a little bit of colour being picked up from somewhere in the environment. Um, but what we want to do is just make the colour cast less noticeable and less of a distraction to the overall look of the image. So take the opacity to maybe about there. And I'll turn that off. And then on again. It's especially helped in the area around the nose. Look on the nose when I turn this on and off. And also in this fur area here. So it's really gotten rid of that rather distracting looking colour cast. So that's really it. I just found that's a really easy way to do it because basically instead of having to um, adjust for different colours of colour casts within the same area by 
selecting different areas and adjusting them individually, putting a wash over the whole thing that basically inverts any colours that are there, just deals with everything at once. And it's a much quicker way of doing it. And uh, I think it's much more effective. So I hope this has really helped. There's a few more things I'm going to do to this image before it's finished. Um, I'm going to uh, adjust the, the contrast and the colour a little bit and fix up the eyes a little bit, maybe doing do a little bit of burning it around the edges, but as far as the colour cast and the overall look and balance of the image, I'm really quite happy with it. So um, yeah, thanks for watching and keep an eye out and I'll be posting more tutorials soon. Thanks, bye.